Good morning, evening, or afternoon, depending on where you are and when you're watching this. It is still Monday, Monday, February 21st. I don't know why I had to look at my phone again because the previous video I also looked at my phone, but I couldn't remember the date. Monday, February 21st, at, it is now 5.35 p.m. And I am right by, but not exactly at, the intersection of Bathurst and Bloor. So, it's a little bit crazy on Bloor, but I'm gonna go walk along Bloor and I'm gonna show you guys a couple of really cool graffiti spots along the way. So, let's take a look at this one. Right here, because this is like a, was this like a chicken and waffles place, but I think it's like a, it was a yogurt place for a bit too, and now it's, I think it's like a Japanese place. There's some graffiti here, but it's, a lot of it's like, tagged and covered over, which is really unfortunate. But that's cool. I, it's like some sort of squid. And then we have a really cool Japanese tidal wave looking one. Oh, this is, there's some better art over here. You get look from here. See, this is much better looking. It's one of those like really nice kind of like pieces that gives you a sense of community. Oh, Kinka, Kinka Izakaya, that's what it was. I swear it used to be like a frozen yogurt place. Maybe that's another intersection though. So this is my second video filmed. So though it was sunny earlier, it's now cloudy and a bit gray. I haven't checked the weather forecast to see if it's going to rain, but we are walking east along Bloor, currently on the south side. This is a really cute uh, piano bar here called uh, Popper's Pub. Popper's Pub. I think they have like a nice rooftop patio. It was actually here the other day. It was really busy, but it was really, it was really nice. The atmosphere is kind of nice. The Annex is one of my favorite neighborhoods. I actually lived around the corner from here for about a year or two. And this is Lee's Palace, which is very famous because of, uh, well, it's always been very local Toronto famous, but famous because of Scott Pilgrim. Oh, maybe here was where the frozen yogurt place was, which is now a penguin pickup. Victory Cafe over at the corner there. They used to be part of Mervish Village, but they moved here after Mervish Village got torn down. The Crafty Coyote, I've not been here but I like their logo and their patio. So this section of Bloor actually kind of like the, um, you know, let them go. So the bike lanes are separated. They kind of raise up a bit, but only on this side. On the other side, they're not, at least not this part. And it makes you feel safer when you're riding a bike.
So I think I think it's down here past futures. There's a couple of nice graffiti murals. So there's this one here. Fortunately, I, I can't really say what they are. I could guess that this is sort of a homage to maybe Toronto's music scene. And then we have some nice ones here. I joked that the guy wearing the red plaid resembled me a bit because I used to wear a lot of red plaid. So that's the old Honest Ed sign or in the style of. I don't actually know where this alleyway leads. I just want to get the shot of the back of this building. So this is a boutique hotel now. And this has a bit of a, I don't want to say tragic story, but I don't know if that's the right word. But it used to be like houses, housing for people that were there for years. So they were like, it was rent control. I don't know rent control, but it's, um, uh, they could afford it because it was within their means. And then at the front was, it was a Poutineville for the longest time, which I really liked. And I really miss, and I'm glad I'm going to. Montreal soon so I can have Poutineville again and their crash crushed potatoes so good but it then was like a barcade like an arcade bar for a bit and then now it's a boutique hotel some really cool graffiti That is amazing. The two white tigers and the dude man bus. A giant snapping turtle there. I'm really bad at trying to decipher what the graffiti says. Like, it looks like a S. And there's an N at the end. I gotta remember this is a laneway that people live in, so I have to keep my mind out. Keep my mind, keep my eye out for cars. There we have a Rick and Morty inspired one. Two really aggressive looking pit bulls. That's really cool. It's a bird of some sort.
I wonder how this happened. Like, did the neighborhood, did the people's houses, did they have to get together? It looks like most of these were done between 2014 and 2017. So I think that's Ed Mervish. Oh, we have a cockatiel. Does it say Simon the Ash Ashhole? The Asholi? Oh, this one's really cool. It's like some killer whales. Oh, really wicked looking gargoyle. There's definitely some amazing talent down this alleyway. When the power of love overcomes the love of power, then the world will know peace. That is incredibly deep. And I agree. Oh, this one looks like it could be cool, but it's kind of blocked off at the moment. This one is neat. I can't figure out the words. Hater Raider? No, like H N H I N C R I. So this is like an R A and then I can't tell what that's supposed to be. And then an E-R. Yeah, it's cool. Little subway mural. Now we're behind Central Tech again. And we're gonna just go head on around this way probably eventually swing back up to Bloor Street, continue on with the rest of this walk. But I thought that would be a really fun detour because I'd actually never been down that alleyway before. I've been to Graffiti Alley down by King and Spadina, somewhere around there. We were doing like a film scouting location once, but Never to that one. And I do know Toronto has a few of those graffiti alleys, but I should look up where more of them are. Because I'm definitely all for touring free art galleries. Although I do have an AGO annual pass, which reminds me I should go there soon. I was supposed to go a couple of weeks ago when they reopened. But unfortunately I got sick, so I couldn't go. It's so cool, the, that old colonial area architecture of this house. And then you have this one here, which is kind of a mix of both, but like the back is definitely more modern. It's like an interesting choice of adding the stripes going up and down. I like that. There's the, remember, I think I was talking about this in one of the videos. The tower in front of the house. Like they have a specific name. Well, it's kind of like bay windows. And that corner looks like it used to be a convenience store.
kind of dawned on me. <laughs> so I was just walking by this home here that I just sort of glanced and turned in and realized, oh, wait, I can see in their whole house. And that maybe filming that little tower part probably wasn't great because I don't think you're supposed to be filming inside people's house. I think it's fine, though. Unless nobody's really watching my YouTube channel <laughs> anyways. This is interesting. I've never seen this kind of playground. It's very, like, industrial looking. All right, because we're coming up upon Spadina. Right to the backside of Robarts here. My only fear is I'm going to have to go across uh, university at some point. And my friend was saying that the protesters are still all out there. I feel like the reason why I don't want to walk by them or walk through them is because if I'm not foreshadowing things, but I've seen videos like they're very aggressive to people, especially if you're wearing a mask, which I am. And I mean, at this point, I know logically I'm outside. I'm not at risk, but it's quite windy and the mask is actually keeping my face warm. So it's better than a scarf right now. <laughs> and I don't want to take it off. the light. I can definitely try to make the light. Daddios, this is really sad. They closed last year. Like, it's actually getting harder and harder to find places in the city that have great just like big plates of comforting spaghetti. There's a helicopter up there which tells me that the protesters are likely still at Bloor and Avenue I'm gonna try to walk around and avoid them if I see that they're there So you can see this the subway or the streetcar went down underground to the station. So they have their own little oh, that's a cool shot. Their own little private roadway here. Which is perfect. This is why I don't ever mind taking Spadina because when you take the other streets like Queen Street and whatnot. By the time a streetcar comes, it's usually backed up and there's like six streetcars because they don't have their own lanes, so they're always trying to like fight with traffic.
yeah, there's a fresh here. I kind of miss fresh. Well, actually, I miss their old menu because they had some really good bowls, like the warrior bowl, the Buddha bowl. Which they still have bowls, but they keep changing the recipe or changing what they're adding into them, and they're just like blah now. Although I think now they have Beyond Burgers, which is fantastic. Because if I go out eating with any of my vegetarian or vegan friends, I actually like vegetarian or vegan food. I mean, I'm not, I'm not one myself, but like some of the stuff they, they make, it, it's so delicious. And then you, you don't feel as gross eating it after. Like when you eat like a red meat burger. <laughs> You tend to feel it quite gross and slimy. I don't know. It's right because all the fat in the meat. This is the U of T High School, which I believe is to prep students, high school students for, actually, actually I'm not sure, I was going to say it's a prep school, but no it's not, it's something else, I'll have to look it up. Hands are getting cold now. Galleria, which is actually a really good Korean uh, convenience slash grocery store. Oh, someone got pulled over. the Badashi Museum. Right at the corner of St. George and Bloor. Walked by and I almost forgot to talk about it. And this building here. I was curious about it for the longest time and it's some sort of like elite club. I can't remember the name. Kind of like the stonemasons, but not really. Or maybe the Illuminati.
maybe the protesters aren't there now? Still hear like a helicopter buzzing around. I know, we have gone But traffic seems to be flowing pretty freely. This is Varsity, UOT. They have a dome usually up in the winter so they can still do things indoors. We'll have a look. So as a teenager, during high school, that's when we, they'd bring us out here to support our school athletes when they compete in track and field. I think it was like every May or early June. I feel like it was May. This building is the Royal Conservatory. This is the Royal Conservatory of Music. Although this is the Royal Conservatory. So this was the Intercontinental before the pandemic and then now it's called the Royal Sinesta. And my friend stayed in there. She felt that the rooms were kind of dated for the, the price that you pay for that. But I think you're paying for the location because you're paying to be at floor. And Josh is like, yeah. <laughs> Here, right across from the ROM. Basically, right at the northern edge of downtown. And of course, this is the ROM. And there's the McDonald's that I always associated with the ROM. Because whenever my mom would take me to the ROM, we'd always eat McDonald's. Although, a few times we ate inside the ROM, which I think they have a Druxies inside there. But that McDonald's had a funny history because they spent lots of money renovating it. Like back in the early 2000s. And then found out like a year or two later that they were tearing it all down to build this condo here. Which they did. And I believe that that McDonald's somehow actually got paid by the developers. Because they likely lost all that money on the renovations to only have the place torn down. 
and that little McMaster University office there that used to be uh god what was it called like Hogtown sandwiches something like that really good sandwich place So it's blocked off, but I definitely don't really see anything going on. So that helicopter is actually very misleading. So I don't know why it's flying around. So technically I could walk behind the barriers. And not jaywalk, but I'll be good and follow the rules even though they're arbitrary at the moment. So if I ever do another historical tour of the area, I'll focus a bit more on this church because there's a lot of really cool photos of this church here and how it's changed over the years. Like, there used to be dirt roads in front of it because that's how old this place is. I wasn't in the this part of Bloor gets very pretty at night. Everything's all lit up. Plus I do absolutely love how over the past decade they made the sidewalks so big. Because they used to be normal sized sidewalks but they like quadrupled the size of the sidewalks. But they needed to because I remember being at Young and Bloor going out for lunch, like you, there's almost no place to step that you'd be walking onto the road. I guess most of these places were probably closed today anyway, since it's a holiday. Oh, that's where the Ilium, William Ashley moved to. It used to be down near Italy, and now that's the LCBO. There's a crosswalk here, or a light to cross. That's a little kind of pet peeve of mine when people when they're in groups like that they like they, they spread out and you can't even get past them like I'm just saying how big this sidewalk is but for whatever reason that group of four people decide to come around the corner and then spread out in a line to like prevent people from 
I'm walking past it. Store. Where's Roots now? Oh, Roots is down there now. Yeah, the whole run for a minute it used to be Roots. flagship the gap it's gone now it's just a shell of the although it looks like something's opened up there but I can't make it out M I G M A G I L Magil Magil I'm really bad with like brand names oh it's, it's the name of the construction company it's not it's not a clothing brand that I've never heard of Oh, I gotta make myself laugh. I wonder what's going there then, if anything. sure if I caught that on camera but if you rewind about 10 to 15 seconds and on the left side there was a guy with his hands like right down his pants huh. I don't think anything was exposed so thankfully I don't have to do any YouTube blurring but unless I was seeing things that wasn't what he was actually doing the LED screens or whatever are lit up at Aritzia tonight. The one is going really, it's going up really quick.
so I think we're gonna stop here. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> so it's hard to see, but I, I was like, oh yeah, Chick Fil A is open. But in my head, I was thinking, oh, it's Sunday. Why is it open? No, wait, it's Monday. But even though it's a holiday, they're open. But they still won't open on Sundays. <laughs> but yeah. So ah, I just felt water drip on my head. So, thank you for joining me from the comfort of your toilet, your desk, your kitchen counter, wherever you're watching this from. And until next time, bye.